Hello everyone, my name is Jesse and welcome back to another Bakugan review. Today we're going to be reviewing some of the side characters that were important in the first season of the show. And I guess I guess some of the second season. They do make an appearance. Um, but yeah, so I wanted to like take a look at them and kind of talk about them. Um, and then I, I don't know, I got a bunch of information uh, to tell you guys and just talk about. And I don't know, I think it'll be a cool review. So um, these are like Bakugan that you don't, they're, they're common so they're not, they're not technically too much, um, but you don't always see them that often. All right, so today's card we're gonna be using is Tsunami. It features Sirenoid, uh, which might be like the most popular of the side characters. So uh, I wanted to go ahead and use this card to like start us off and like get us in the groove of what we're about to get into. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and like, again, just like in the uh, Legendary Warrior review video, I'm gonna just randomly pick one and start talking about it. All right, so first up is Ventus. So we have Harpus. Um, so she was in the show for a while. Uh, I didn't like her at first. I think she was a weird character. Um, but towards the end of it, she got a little bit better. Uh, she reminds me a lot of Monaris, which used to be my favorite character growing up. Um, but, uh, you know, Harpus actually has speaking parts, so I think it's a bit better. Uh, so she has two little feet here. This one's kind of stuck. There we go, they come out. And uh, yeah, that's her only manual parts. Uh, she's very typical of like all Ventus Bakugan. You know, she's got the green and, and that's kind of it. I do like this top piece here though. That's a cool design. It almost looks like a trident or some kind of spear, which is kind of neat. But yeah, let's go ahead and pop her open. All right, so here's Harpus and do a little spin. Yeah, so um, she's 300 Gs exactly which is uh, pretty cool. One of the weaker Bakugan I have. Um, and yeah, so I really like the yellow and the red detailing here. Like normally on Bakugan, you don't get this many different colors. You usually have to paint them like I do or, or something. Um, but she actually does, which is kind of nice. Um, I actually haven't like looked at this Bakugan in quite a while. It's, it's been one of my like storage things. Um, but yeah, so pretty cool, you know? And then she also closes up very easy, just feet and then Wings go in, and you kind of have to do this all together, but they click together. And uh, yeah, she's also relatively easy to roll from what I remember. Yeah, so uh, pretty cool. And uh, yeah, I like her wings. They're really big, very like nice to have on a Ventus Bakugan. It's just big wings. Um, yeah, so I'm a pretty big fan of it. All right, up next on the list is Tentaclear. So this one's probably one of the more forgotten side characters. Um, yeah, so Tentaclear was a weird one. I don't know how many people actually like Tentaclear. I think his ball form's cool, but in the show he was kind of creepy. Um, but he does have some really interesting designs on him. So he's got all this nice gold, and then um, this piece right here, which kind of resembles an, an eye. And um, I think that's kind of good foreshadowing. Uh, if you've never seen Tentaclear, you'll know why in a second. Um, but yeah, I mean, very typical colors of a Chaos Bakugan. And uh, I really am a fan of like all the different like, I like these like cool, I, I don't know what you call them, they're almost like, like the little dots you have when you're like on a map or something, like the little pinpoints. Uh, yeah, but uh, go ahead and open him up. So he's got two manual parts, which are feet here. And uh, they're actually in the back, so you have to open him up this way. Let's go ahead and pop him open. Yeah, so this is Chaos Tentaclear, and I'll go ahead and do a spin for you guys. And uh... Yeah, there's not a whole lot to him. I mean, he's a giant floating eyeball. Um, he's got some pretty cool inside designs that are gold. You can kind of see that, and they're kind of just going all the way around him. He's 280 Gs, so kind of weak, actually. Um, I think he might be my weakest of the side characters. Uh, so, I don't know, that's, that's kind of interesting. There are a couple different variations of this. I'm not sure what the difference is, but like mine has white as the eye and a light blue eye here. But there are also versions that have like, instead of the white, it's like a dark green. And um, I can try and find a picture and like put it up beside. I don't know what the difference is. I don't know what, like why, why the reasoning was behind that. I didn't look into it. Um, but it is kind of interesting to note that there are some like that. And uh, yeah, so that's Chaos Tentaclear. It's very easy to close too. So you just shut these back pieces and then all of these triangles close in. And then they're uh, clipped together by these two longer pieces. And uh, yeah, that's all there is to it. All right, up next is Juggernoid. So this one's also probably pretty forgotten. Um, so this is a B1 Aquas Juggernoid. That there was a character in the show kind of towards the end. I can't remember the kid's name, 
but there Alice helped a little kid who was bad at Bakugan and like helped him brawl and stuff and he's he's kind of prominent towards like the last couple episodes of the show um but yeah so I did include Juggernaut in this and I think a lot of people know about Juggernaut I think he's a cool Bakugan um so yeah so he's got this little like tail piece that kind of comes out um you can see it right there and uh yeah so here's Juggernaut he's kind of like a cool turtle which is super cool um, you see a lot of different variations of him, but specifically the Aquos in terms of main characters. Um, he's 300 G's, got this nice orange kind of like top piece in the back. And uh, yeah, um, I don't know, there's not a whole lot to talk about here. He's just like, I mean, he's a turtle and he's got a mouth that doesn't open. And uh, that's, <laughs> that's all there is to it. Um, but yeah, a cool back gun to have, especially if you're collecting. Um, so to close him, you shut that piece. And then you kind of have to close the head and then these two pieces of the feet at the same time and then you should like close them up. Um, but his ball design is very neat. It kind of reminds me of like teeth or something or like an egg because it's got like these pieces that close in together and then these cool different designs here, which is kind of interesting, um, but nothing really on the bottom. All right guys, so up next is Sirenoid. So a lot to talk about here. Um, really popular back gone, I think. Uh, she's, she's pretty well known. Um, and she was one of my favorites growing up as well, just because I was interested in like sea life and stuff. Uh, but yeah, so she's got some pretty interesting like lines going up. Like she looks like a mermaid, basically. I know she's a siren, but she's got this like cool mermaid tail and um, all kinds of different stuff. And even like on her flippers here, like you see this like nice teal green that you see in most back of gun like that. Um, and then they open up as well. And uh, yeah, so I think it's kind of cool. And then... Go ahead and pop her open. So there she is. And I'll do a quick spin. Yeah. And you can see right there on her tail, she's 630 Gs. So rather strong, actually. And uh, a pretty good Bakugan to have. Um, I think with a lot of these Bakugan, and I did completely forget to talk about pricing, most of them range anywhere from $10 to probably 25 i don't think i spent more than i think i spent 20 on this one but most bakugan that i just like every bakugan in here that i talk about can be found in that range i think tentaclear being the cheapest i think i got him for eight um but around that range is probably what you're expected to spend on each of them um so not too shabby uh, but yeah so i don't know saranoid super cool bakugan um I, I don't know she's just really interesting a very unique character unique ball design you don't see a lot of them that like swing out like this except maybe like a sting lash or something um so it's kind of neat to have one that's very different uh and then to close her up you just shut her flippers right there and then you close the tail next so you cover up her face and then these two pieces just click in and there she is back in her ball part. all right guys so up next is pyrus fortress another pretty popular one you see him i think one time in the second season um, so this is like the guy that has like the different faces and uh, yeah, so he's got two manual parts here that pop open just the feet and he's got a very interesting design as well. He's very like, um, I guess Asian inspired because the character was also like uh, of Asian origin and you see a lot of like these different like dots here and all this like nice. This is much more like orange bronze than what I'm, I'm kind of used to seeing. Um, I think it's just good paint, a good paint job, but it's still really cool. And uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and pop him open. So again, manual parts down here are the feet and he just goes down. So yeah, this is Pyrus Fortress. Uh, one hand's a little lower than the other. I guess it's kind of loose there. Uh, I'm gonna do a spin for you guys. So he's definitely a much more bulky Bakugan. Um, a lot of like top pieces are popping open, but nothing on the bottom. He's got cool fists here, really big, powerful like hands. He'd look cool in Subterra as well, I think. Um, and then hands here and then he's got one face here and then one face there uh, he's got he's got four faces um i'm pretty sure there's one on the back too maybe not uh, it looks like there's one i'm not sure but i remember seeing three in the show for sure uh but yeah he's pretty cool 520 g so rather strong um not my strongest but a cool back we got to have and uh yeah so pretty pretty interesting one here and he shuts just by closing his feet and then kind of like clasping 
everything together. So really easy to close. So there is one more Bakugan on the list I wanna talk about that I actually don't have, but I feel like it's worth discussing, and that is Subterra Cycloid. So you see a lot of different Cycloids, but not Subterra because it was only released in like Japan. So he's very hard to get, and he's very, I guess he's very sought after, and you can spend a lot of money to get one, and I just don't feel like spending upwards of $300 on a Subterra Cycloid. Um, and hopefully you're seeing a picture right now um, just to see what he looks like. Um, I don't have one. I actually don't have any Cycloids, but I wanted to bring him up um, just because he's pretty rare and pretty valuable. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I've seen them online selling for like two, anywhere from like $220 to upwards of 400 which I think is insane for a Bakugan. Um, I mean, the most I've spent on a Bakugan is on my single-headed Hydronoid, and I only spent $161. Uh, and that's, I mean, that was even a good deal considering the single-headeds go for 200 or more. Um, so yeah, I just don't think 200 to $300 is worth spending on like a, just a Subterra Cycloid. If you do have one, that's awesome. Um, but I did want to bring them up just to discuss it. Okay guys, so that is it for the side characters from the first season of Bakugan Battle Brawlers. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, feel free to leave a like, drop a comment, and of course subscribe for more awesome content. Uh, feel free to uh, start a discussion in the comments, ask me questions. I love talking to you guys. Peace out.